Ever since I could properly express myself, I have been creating worlds. When I was really, really little, uh, I would go out on the carpet, take a couple of blankets, make some mountains, make some rivers, and all of my toys would become the inhabitants of that world. I would map out story arcs, I would map out adventures, and those creatures, of uh, those toys living in that world would come to life for a period of time. And my play was the way that I expressed my world, and that was all well and good. But the first big change in the way that I saw creation and the way that I saw my own expression in that way was really in second grade. And it was in second grade that I discovered the real power behind a written word in creation. And part of that process was the realization of if I write something down, I don't have to remember it. And if I don't have to remember it, I won't forget it, and then I can come back to it and make a better world. And kind of a guiding hand and a pushing force was my second grade teacher, Elizabeth Marble, who had all kinds of prompts. She had, uh, we had a writing journal every day, and that, or not every day, but we had a writing journal, and we keep those going. But the one assignment that always sticks out to me was we were given a bunch of magazines to look through, and we'd pick a photo, and we had to incorporate that into a two-page narrative of some kind, double-spaced, big handwriting, <laughs> maybe half a page in Times New Roman. Um, but all the other kids were picking photos of cool houses, a snowman, some animals. I went for the photo of two human-esque figures made out of vegetables, riding bicycles, with an orange background. So naturally, my story took place in a world inhabited by sentient vegetables. And that image became the final shot of the narrative in which these two characters ride away from an exploding building into a sunset. <laughs> and what was really, really incredible was, rather than telling me to pick a different picture, write a normal story, <laughs> don't have exploding buildings, because, you know, I'm a second grader and it's a little bit extreme. <laughs> rather, Elizabeth said, you know, you can fix your spelling here, and tell me more about this character who you introduced and then left out for the rest of the story. <laughs> then, you know, why are they exploding a building? Good questions. Um, and it got me, rather than to stop my creative process, it got me to think deeper about it. And this process of going deeper, building, and kind of delving more into my worlds rather than leaving them behind one by one was really, really highlighted for me in fifth grade when I met my now best friend, Ryan hoy -Reese. We definitely didn't start that way. Um, he and I both had a really strong love for fantasy, and as such, we butted heads on it because he played a lot of video games and I read a lot of books, and our interpretations of what was good fantasy were very different. And so we had a lot of arguments about that, and eventually we kind of, I don't know when it happened, but we came to the determination that, well, what if instead of fighting over it, we just worked together and did something with it instead? And that was sort of the start of what I consider our masterwork, Daedral. Um, it didn't start kind of in a one aha moment. It was a couple of different pieces that came together. Uh, the first being, uh, one of the ways that we played was we would go out into the woods, sticks in hand, and more or less talk for three hours as we walked around, um, creating all kinds of creatures, worlds, characters, towns, you get the gist. Um, and normally we'd play through one, and the next time we'd play through a new one. Um, but there was this one time and we came up with a certain set of deities that we happened to really like, and we came to the end of our session, and 
when we got back the next time, we were like, you know, that was a really good world, let's do that again. And then when we got to the end of that day, we weren't finished with our story, so we picked it up again. Flash forward a year <coughs> or so, and I was as, sitting in the back of the church uh, drawing some different world, as one does. And, uh, <laughs> and I had, was creating these kind of playing card-esque things with some cool creatures and kind of realms that they're loosely based on, and, you know, I thought it was a good idea, so I showed it to Ryan. And one of those realms was called Daedral, and we took that along with the other names of the realms and incorporated it into our play. And then we started to build something bigger. We started to think beyond just what we were playing and, well, how much bigger can we go? So by the end, we have probably a gigabyte worth of data in a Google Drive somewhere and a 20 sheet, like 20 sheet of paper map of, you know, eight and a half by 11 spread out, takes about probably six feet. Um, and, you know, it's all drawn out. We have all this detail. And it was something that, it touched me in a certain way because it was something that was so much bigger than myself, but at the same time was something that I had kind of done on my own and in collaboration. And there are aspects of it that while we were creating it, it just sort of organically happened. We were talking and suddenly we had a new race of bird creatures, or we were talking and, oh, there's six new cities over here, or, oh, we need a new continent, here we go. So, and we built this world and we just kind of let things happen after a while. And we, of course, wrote down or tried to what stories we had come up with, but it wasn't, it never was terribly planned out. It, again, it happened organically and flowed. And it's that kind of power to make something so far beyond yourself that you kind of get lost in your own creations. And I think that's something that at least I had been missing up until that point, and it gave me a focal point in my own creation that everything has kind of drawn back to even now. And I'd like to think that somewhere along the way, just that little bit of odd writing about plant people had something to do with it. Thank you.